Stay tuned for the Planet Earth's most relevant newscast. Broadcasting from Sector 17G of the Milky Way Galaxy, we present you a program that is a strange combination of newsworthy and non-newsworthy. Funny at times and extremely non-funny at others. Ladies and gentlemen, Earthlings and Lunars, we present to you, Velma Live. Welcome to episode 56 of Veilmount Live. I'm Anne-Marie Scott, and I'm joined by my lovely co-host, Jody Newham. Thank you. We've got a very special show for you tonight, featuring guests from Montreal and Winnipeg. Matteo Tomlinson and Ingrid Gatton performed at a house concert here in Veilmount on January 11th. They're joining us tonight for some commentary and analysis on the pieces we're showing. We're really excited to see what they've got to say about our station. So without further ado, we'll let them introduce the show. Hello, and welcome to Vailmont Live. My name is Matteo Tomlinson. And I'm Ingrid Gatton. And we have a wonderful lineup of things for you on the show today. Oh my god, it's going to be great! It's going to be so exciting, we have so many things going on here. Look at that list. Yeah, actually this page is blank. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> you know, really, I don't see anything here. Yeah, literally it's... Well, but there are some exciting things going on that I've heard around town. Yes, apparently today there's going to be some snow. Traffic forecast looks very mild. Uh, all lanes moving well on Main Street. Okay, that was totally inaccurate. Actually, we've got many things lined up. Highlights from the Pee Wee's Hockey Tournament. Tales of a journey to the Athabasca Pass between Jasper and Kinbasket Lake. Music from the January 11th concert. And a science piece from Zachary Schneider. It's going to be amazing. Let's start with sports. Here are the Valmount Pee Wees battling a team from Prince George, filmed by William Snow. Thank you. 
in for commentary and analysis with Matteo and Ingrid. Well, wasn't that wonderful and heartwarming and amazing? <laughs> Where I'm from, Ingrid, you know, we wouldn't actually call that news. Ah, uh, yes, well, some things are just maybe not as newsworthy as, as um, others, but, but news could really be anything, couldn't it? It's just a warm smile from a child could certainly be news in some places. Well, you got me there. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> That's weird. It sounded like they just dissed our coverage of the game. Oh, it's all in good fun, Anne-Marie. City folks like to joke around like that. Well, I guess it is kind of funny. Backcountry enthusiast John Crowley of Tijon made a commemorative trip to Athabasca Pass. He made the trek exactly 200 years after David Thompson made his way there. Here's his reflections on David Thompson. Explorer. Fur trader. Arms dealer. I was a participant on a ski trip uh, that left from Jasper and we skied up the entire length of the Whirlpool River Valley to Athabasca Pass where at the Great Divide. Uh, where the mountains drop off into BC and back towards Kinbasket Lake. Right, that sounds like a pretty, uh, pretty great adventure. This must have been, uh, probably you did this in the fall time. <laughs> no, I wish. We actually left on January 6th and one of the purposes of the trip was a commemoration of the trip that David Thompson took in 1811. This would be the bicentennial anniversary and so our aim was to arrive at Athabasca Pass on January 10th, the same day that he would have arrived. How did it go? Ago. Did you guys make it on the 10th? Uh, we did, actually. Wow. Uh, it, it was epic times. What were the temperatures? Um, the coldest temperature I recorded at our campsite was 34 degrees below zero mm -hmm. Celsius. And the highest temperature I recorded at our campsite at the pass was about... 25 below. Oh man. And windy. Jeez. And blowing snow. It's a long time outdoors. Eight days in total. It was uh, over 50 kilometers skiing to the camp at Cane Meadows below Mount Cane just before Athabasca Pass. Yeah. And luckily though this trip had been organized uh, through Parks Canada with quite a few members of the Warden Service of Jasper National Park and they had brought in a canvas wall tent with a wood stove in September that they set up 
So we all at least had a place to dry out and get warm every night and right. socialize. Did anybody have any trouble? Did anybody uh, get frostbite or anything like that? Are you guys? No, there was no frostbite troubles. The worst of our woes were blisters on feet from long days of slogging flat ground in ski boots. I guess a couple broken ski bindings that were wired back together and made Ooh. to work. Ooh, that can be tricky to be yeah. in the back country with improper It was. Gear. And actually, though, we were reading in David Thompson's journals, which they brought up copies of, and there was one day where he cursed the fact that he had broken his snowshoe. Wow. Which, similar <laughs> effect. You How realize long? that you don't go anywhere if you don't have the right gear on. Wow. In that kind of weather. Wow. And how do you think the weather compared to what David Thompson experienced 200 years ago? Well, we actually had his journals, and there were days the day uh, after they crossed the pass, they uh, recorded that it was 30 degrees below zero Fahrenheit. But there were other days earlier in the trip when it was above freezing, and it was, seemed to be far more consistent for us okay. in the cold. Although David Thompson had the luxury of being able to shoot moose along the way. <laughs> what, you guys, you guys weren't allowed? <laughs> no, no, the, the, the park wardens probably wouldn't have uh, agreed to that. Right. Having been on that journey, do you, do you have a better sense of who David Thompson was? Do, do you feel any sort of connection? I mean, neat that you had his journals there. Absolutely, and that was uh, the best uh, feeling I had of that sort, actually, was in a later day when the, the other Parks Canada group had mostly left and we were staying behind in the wall tent, staying warm, not going anywhere and reading the journals. Wow. And uh, thinking about the same terrain because it's one thing to travel the way we were in our group with modern gear and look around and it's beautiful scenery and it is very rugged mountains around there and it's a long way back. Of course, they had the advantage of having dog sleds and teams of uh, women to cook. <laughs> no, they did not have women on the trip. They had the women in their camp before they set out up the river. And because he writes at one point in the journal that uh, they were unfortunately at a loss with the moose skins from the moose they had killed because the women had all stayed behind and couldn't clean them for them and the men were incapable of doing that. Any, 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 any reflections on David Thompson? And it was imp impressive enough for us, the, the, the kind of power of that wilderness and the cold and that time of year and we all kept kind of questioning why the whole time even though we had and David Thompson did have a wall tent with him as stated in his journal so he could stay warm at night right his men might not have had that luxury <laughs> and uh, many of them quit actually many of his uh, French uh, Voyager helpers left at right at shortly after they crossed the pass and went down to what would be now Kinbasket Lake huh. many of his men quit and went back to Alberta and left him behind and we kind of could see why, because traveling that far in that kind of snow and wind back there is not easy and not pleasant. Strategically, why was this an important trip and why was it advantageous to take that, to take that pass? Was it just like a wrong turn? Didn't know about the leather pass or what? He had actually already crossed the Rocky Mountains once, David Thompson had, through Howe's Pass and come out near Golden. However, because he was trading with every, all the different groups of First Nations peoples, on either side there were political conflicts. On coming back to do that again, he was barricaded by the Pygon people who told him that he wasn't allowed to cross that way anymore because he was trading weapons to their enemies, the Kootenai people. Wow. <laughs> wow, David Thompson, weapons trader. I hadn't thought about that. <laughs> he traded whatever they needed and mo the majority of the trade at that point was guns for furs. Uh, but with the opening of Athabasca Pass to him with no, uh, with no resistance from peoples on either side, that became a main trade route for the fur trade to from the Pacific to the central Canada. Seriously? Mm. And actually in, the, in August of the same year, after traveling across the pass and camping to last the rest of the winter out at his boat encampment camp, which he called it, where they built boats, they boated then down the entire length of the Columbia River to the Pacific. Wow. 
I guess uh, we want to send a message to the kids at home that 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 this sort of thing is not an acceptable thing to do. You don't want to be doing exercise outdoors, right? I mean, you don't, you know, you don't, oh, want, because anything could happen, really. It's true. And even if there is a historical precedent for d deciding to ski all the way to the Continental Divide across the Rocky Mountains in the middle of January, it's, I mean, how much exercise is that? You could Carrying probably... 10 days worth of food on your back, that weighs about 65 pounds. Is that right? And, uh, you know, probably traveling a grand total of about 140 kilometers. You're going to want to talk to your orthopedic surgeon about that. And the other thing that you, you might consider is uh, you could probably just watch something like this uh, on television. Uh, just stay at home. You could probably catch it from the safety of your couch. You might be able to. Not this particular trip, as we didn't bring any video equipment. Right. Something like it. Something like it, yes. From the air. From a helicopter. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Stay in your armchairs, Vailmount. Don't ski across the Rocky Mountains unless you mean it. <laughs> wow, 140 kilometers over eight days. Packing all your food on your back. So cold. Let's see what Mateo and Ingrid think. Um... I will say, uh, for me, the clip was a little slow, uh, a little awkward, you know, a little rough around the edges. Uh, you know, I'm from a town of uh, 5,000 people. Things move a little quicker at the gas station. Mm. Uh, convenience stores got a bit of a line up there uh, at times, and uh, so the action just kind of flows a little mm -hmm. uh, rough and tumble styles. Well, being from a town you know, of 1,000 people myself, I feel... I feel as though that news just has something to offer everyone in the community. And it is about the community of mm. Vailmount. Yeah, that's so true, Ingrid. Yeah, really, uh, thank you for that. So uh, for next, um, I think the next segment we're going to go to is um, My First Day of School by Joni Rotherson. And so take it away, Joni. Uh, um, we don't even have a Joni Rutherson's here. They're just joking around. <laughs> Those city slickers have some nerve. Easy now. Just because we don't have lineups at the convenience store doesn't mean we aren't important people. Okay. Some music, maybe? <sighs> I've got a feeling they're going to like this one. This song's called The Sea and the Prairie. It's kind of, it's about traveling, for sure, to some extent. It's also pretty much... Well, it's about kind of like introspection as well, which is like, I feel like kind of something that traveling does for you, you know, you always have to like see, see yourself and a whole bunch of other people and be like, and re respond and, and see yourself as a mirror kind of in other people. The song is kind of about that. The sea and the prairie. <laughs>
<laughs> Fantastic. Let's see what our new friends think. Indeed. Okay, well, <laughs> what did you think about that one, Matthew? <laughs> yeah, that, uh, uh, that one. Maybe you could do the next part of the newscast, and then, <laughs> and then maybe hand. you would stay. Please. Um. <laughs> Actually, you know, <laughs> you know what? This is just a. Oh, <laughs> this has been really a great little s segment of the episode. Don't make another episode now. <laughs> Don't okay? make another episode. What does that even mean? Another episode. Another it's a episode. Little early of, for another. You know episode. what? <laughs> We are talking about news episodes right now. You know, now, it's a nonstop like episode. You know what? Life over the here. episode. Of Is this. Sorry. That was cute. Are they lovers? They're not doing analysis. Mateo's not even watching. I think they're quite cute. This is why I don't live in the city. Who needs that negative energy? Okay. Okay. Here's Zachary with a new segment he calls Sciency Stuff. I guess. Hi, I'm Zachary Schneider, and today I'm going to blow up a few balloons with vinegar, baking soda that is inside the balloons, and a bottle. First, you need to put about three quarters of your bottle full of vinegar. Okay, one cup of vinegar with this small bottle. Put a balloon on the top of the bottle. Make sure it's nice and tight because you don't want it to fall off and then all the baking soda goes kapoof. Okay, there we go, nice and secure. Now what's going to happen is going to be an acid-based reaction. The baking soda is going to go in to the bottle and then it's going to fizz, creating a gas called carbon dioxide. This carbon dioxide needs to spread around. So it'll spread in the bottle, but there isn't enough room, so it'll go up into the balloon. So. Get ready, and I'm going to pour this baking soda filled balloon into this bottle full of vinegar. Okay, this balloon didn't get as big as I thought. Wow, that is a big balloon. Wow, cool. So, why blow, blow up balloons yourself when you could have chemistry do it for you? Okay, maybe open it first. And tight. Wow, that is a crazy big baking soda balloon. Okay, one baking soda balloon that's sort of heavy because all the baking soda didn't go into the here. Okay, well, this is Zachary Schneider signing off of sciencey stuff, I guess. I don't know. I guess it's not really crafts anymore. Well, bye. <laughs> Awesome as always. Thank you, Zachary. I'll never blow up a balloon again. I loved it too. Let's see what Mateo thinks. They had better not make fun of Zachary. Well, um, I'll tell you what I like about that last piece. Um, nothing, actually. <laughs> well, there, 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 mu there must be something good. Um, not in that piece of news. I, you know, I found the closer we got to the end, the more I enjoyed it. <laughs> well, uh, 
Uh, the ending is always my favorite part of yeah. every of yeah. every news yeah. newscast. I love when it uh, yeah. ends. I loved when it ended. Yeah. I, felt, I felt that I was very when compelling <laughs> when it was over. Yeah. I was I was moved. <laughs> yeah. Who the heck do they think they are? Now, now, they're just having fun. Mateo, sure, but Ingrid too. Are we just not good enough for them and their lattes and frappes? Wait a minute. Anne-Marie, you're a barista, aren't you? Oh, this is infuriating. Who invited them on the show anyway? Andrew. He'll be hearing from me. Okay, we're almost through. Just a song by Mateo's left and then the credits. Fine. Here is Mateo Tomlinson's song called Mile End Girl. He could see she was trouble right from the start.
I'm sure he's going to gloat about that one. <laughs> we'll see. I might as well tell you, I thought it was outrageously awful. Let's see what they think. We'd like to talk to you about love. Something that I think we don't talk enough about. Um, and so really, I just want to open the floor today for your phone calls. Maybe we could just um, also... And... In other news, um, I do <laughs> feel like... <laughs> Did you Veil just mount. cut me, like, right <laughs> off? Is that what just happened? I, uh, I feel like uh, maybe the news of Veil Mount See, the is a little love. more important in the Veil Mount live show. That's just a little feeling I have, perhaps. Feeling? In the she news, used the word feeling. I'm very impressed. In I'm the very news impressed. that's on here already. Now, love may not always make the news, and it may not always be the headline, such as Chachi's dog... Uh, got better from his cold, but <laughs> I'll tell you something, <laughs> Ingrid, Ingrid, I'll tell you something, folks, love, okay, that's all I'm gonna say. What does love have to do with it? What's love but a second-hand emotion? What's love got to do got to do with it? Who needs a heart when a heart can be broken? Don't mock me, I've had enough. Rightio then. Just the credits remain. Have a great week and stay out of the city. Actually, they're both from small towns. They smell like city to me. There's a basketball tournament this weekend. Alex Cuba is playing on Tuesday, February 1st. On January 31st, there's a community health forum at 7 p.m. at the clinic. Good night. Special thanks to Ingrid and Mateo for helping out on the broadcast. Not. You know they didn't really mean those things. What do you mean? Those comments were pre-recorded back on the 12th. Well, they wouldn't have even known what we had on the show. I guess somebody just asked them to improvise and then played it back today. Andrew McCracken, you are so evil. Not. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Good night.
just want us to say stuff. Mm -hmm. We want to introduce ourselves. Oh, I, sort of I thought that 